On today's video, we're going to be showing you how to measure and cut rafters. Today we're installing yellow pine rafters that are 2x12s on the job we're working on. And there's three main things you'll need to know if you're going to be measuring and cutting rafters. Number one is the pitch of the roof, which in this case it's a 12-12, which is steep. Okay, so if you don't know your roof pitch, I'm going to show you a real quick trick to figure out your roof pitch without any real math. So first you'll set a string line that runs from the inside of your wall plate on the exterior wall. You run that string line up to where you want the heel of the rafter to hit. Now I've already got a rafter installed here, but you would be doing this beforehand to figure the pitch. And then you'll just slide your speed square in to the pivot point on that string line and see where the string line runs across your square, right there at a 12-12 on the common scale. And that's a quick and easy way to figure out the pitch of your roof uh, without doing any math. Uh, number two is how wide your wall plate is that the bottom of the rafter is going to sit on. In most cases, it would be a 2x4 or a 2x6. And the third thing you'll need to know is a measurement. And I'll show you how to do that. I like to measure my rafters from short point of the plum cut to short point of the bird's mouth. So the reason I like to measure short point to short point, uh, well, there's two reasons actually. One is that it's on the same edge of the board. The short points are both on the same edge, so you're not measuring diagonally across the board. Uh, so that it's easier. The second thing is that sometimes our rafters stick up past the top of the beam, uh, so they're just floating in the air. There's nothing to measure to up there. The reason for that is that sometimes you need an air gap to let air flow out a ridge vent on your roof if you're not doing spray foam, which sometimes we don't. But if you're a numbers guy, you can also just do some simple math to figure out the length of the rafter from the same points. You could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure the length of your rafter. You would just need to know A, the length between the inside of your beam and the inside of your wall plate horizontally, and B, the height from the top of your wall plate to where you want the heel of the rafter to hit on your beam. Plug the numbers into the formula shown here and it will give you the rafter length. Before we get going, let's look at a speed square because this is what we're going to be using. Uh, the speed square has a pivot point which is marked here. It has a hook that you can hook on the edge of a board. And it also has several scales here. What we're going to be using is the common scale. And this is for cutting common rafters. Uh, there's also a hip valley scale for cutting the ends of hip and valley rafters. And there's also degrees down here at the bottom. And that can be used as well in cutting rafters. But today we're going to be mainly looking at the common scale and using this pivot point and also this inch scale across this way. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is mark the top cut of this board. We'll just say that's our short point where our heel is. And I know this roof is a 12-12, so I'm gonna put my speed square with the pivot point right on that mark. And I'm gonna turn it till I see 12 on the common scale right here. And that's the 12-12 pitch, which will make this a plumb cut against the beam that's gonna be right here. So I'll draw this all the way through. 12-12, by the way, is also 45 degrees. So just hook across the top edge of the board. And I did check my crown, by the way. This is crowned up on the top edge of the rafter. So that's the top edge of the board. And uh, now we'll hook right here and pull this way to measure to the other short point. Tiny nail. Let's pull down and mark the short point of the bird's mouth. Okay, now I'm down on the other end of the board and I've got this short point marked where the bird's mouth short point is going to start right here. And just for reference, I'm on the same side of the board so our top cut angle is like this way. So we're on the same side of the board. So I'm going to take my speed square and we're going to go the opposite direction and go ahead and spin around till we see 12 on the common and make a line. Now that's your horizontal cut. That's going to sit right on top of your wall plate, which would be right there two by six um, and there's several different ways you could do this bird's mouse we're going to look at that um, if you're using a two by six plate which we are you would measure along the angle like this using your scale five and a half inches because that's how wide a two by six is and um, and then we will go 45 degrees 12 12 down and we'll cut this out and that's your bird's mouth you will sit on the plate right here and this will go down the outside of your wall. Now, if you have plywood on the outside of your wall, you're gonna have an extra half inch of thickness here. So when you measure this way, you're gonna go six inches before you go down plumb. 
So that's the two ways you could cut your bird's mouth. Um, now let's look at rafter tails. We've slid down the board a bit more now this way, and uh, let's look at doing this rafter tail cut at the end. So we use a two by six fascia board. So the end of this rafter tail needs to be uh, the same width as a two by six. So we can come down here and do a plumb mark. I didn't measure how far this is, but just for reference, uh, we can do a plumb cut and then measure down five and a half vertically. And that's, that's gonna be the two by six fascia board right there that nails on and then we will run this cut out horizontally like so and we'd cut this line and this line and this would give you about a foot overhang now this part of the board down here isn't really necessary so a lot of times what I'll do is actually cut that off as well you can take your speed square and scribe and you'll get something like that um, and you can just leave just this part as your rafter tail if you don't need this much hanging down. On this particular rafter that I'm cutting right now, I don't need any overhang. There's gonna be a porch roof that butts in way up here, so I don't need this board to hang off any. So what I'm gonna do is clip this rafter tail off vertically right at the outside edge of the house. So to do that, um, again, I'm using this speed square uh, as a, this is a 12-12 pitch, so I can also just use this as a 45 degree, the same as 12-12. I will run this line up here. Now I've got a vertical line that's flush with the outside of that wall plate and I'll just cut this and this to give me what I need for this rafter. A quick note to get these more accurate is to cut on the correct side of the line. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be cutting on this side of the line on both cuts. If you cut on the other side, like on this side, it'll take an extra eighth inch out of your measurement because of the width of the saw blade itself, the kerf we call it. Um, will get taken out of the measurement of the board instead of out of the cutoff. So that's a good tip if you want to get these real accurate. Now we're going to make this cut. This is our plumb cut, the top of the rafter. I like to pull this guard back as I go so it doesn't you know, try to steer the saw where I don't want it to go. Uh, so here we go. All right, that's it guys, I got this one cut and ready to go. Um, remember to size your lumber, either get a code book or get an engineer, or you can use this app by the Lumber Council that I use. I'm gonna flash some screenshots up of that right now. Okay, here's this app by the American Wood Council called Span Calc. It's a free app you can get on your smartphone, you can have it with you on the job, and it's updated a lot more regularly than the code books are. It'll tell you what material you can use, how thick a board, what species, and what spacing you need for your rafters so that your roof doesn't collapse.